أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين recitation of the Quran with this as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the authentic narration has shown us to recite A'udhu Billahi Sami'u Al-Aleem Minash Shaytan Al-Rajeem even in our recitation in Salah and to seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we, when we recite the Quran the Quran is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ghair makhluq and we seek refuge with Allah from misusing this kalam, from misunderstanding, from a lack of implementation, and from distorting any of the meanings and implementation of this Quran before reciting. That's why we begin the recitation of the Quran with A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaytan al rajim A'udhu Billah, what does it mean? A'wada, A'wada, this is to seek shelter. Yani in linguistics, when you go back to the Arabic language, this would be used for that grass that was protected by a rock and the ground. So when there is grass on the ground, the, the goats would eat the grass. But if there was a rock under the curve, there would be a part of the grass that the, that the goat couldn't get to. Or when you eat meat and there's a fold in the bone, and there's a piece of meat that is in that fold where you can't get to it, it would be sheltered, it would be protected. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. From shaitan getting to us, from shaitan misguiding us, from shaitan taking us astray. And that's why when we begin the recitation of Quran or even in Salah, we say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar Rajeem. This has also come in the authentic narration as A'udhu Billahi Sami Al Alim, which is, I seek refuge with Allah, the one who sees and uh, hears and knows everything. Sami, he is all hearing. He's, he hears everybody. When we make that supplication, Allah hears us. Alim, he's the all-knowing. Minash shaitan ar-rajim. From a shaitan, from Iblis, and those that follow him, from the shayateen, and they are accursed. They are the ones that are rejected. A'udhu billahi sami'u al-alim. Minash shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Regarding Bismillah, according to Yani some of the ulema of Islam, this is an ayah from Surah Al-Fatiha. And most of the musahif you will see will have a number one with it. What is rajih? And I'm not going to go into the depth of khilaf here. But what is correct is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is an ayah mustaqilla. It is an ayah from the Quran at the beginning of every surah except Surah Tawbah. And there is clear dalail that when the musahif were written, it was not written in the beginning of Surah Tawbah. And there's only one surah where it is mentioned in the surah itself and this is regarding the letter of Sulaiman alayhi salam to Bilqis which begins with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Surah Naml I believe, right? Surah Naml This is the only surah it's mentioned inside the surah but it is at the beginning of every surah including Surah Al-Fatiha What is Rajah is from Surah Al-Fatiha itself even though there is Adilla for that but we look at the Dalil which is the Hadith as Ibn Kathir and others have mentioned which is when Rasulullah said that Allah divided the salah between him and his abd. 
when the abd begins with Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Allah SWT responds. What's the first ayah here? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. But we recite Bismillah Rahman Rahim uh, before the recitation of every surah, including Surah Al Fatiha, and in our salah. But as in salah, we recite it silently. The adilla, the stronger adilla, point to that you do not make jarh, you do not say out loud Bismillah Rahman Rahim. What is Bismillah? The ism Allah by, with the name of Allah. But what with the name of Allah? Everything we do before we eat, what do we say? Bismillah. Right? Before we uh, enter the bathroom from the uh, adhkar that is masnoon from the Rasulullah say Bismillah. Before we write, before we read, before we do anything, we say Bismillah. So actually we're saying this in the name of Allah. Aqra'u, I recite, or aktabu, or akulu, or whatever I do. But we make hadith, we don't mention that because it is understood that before everything we begin with the name of Allah. Ar Rahman or Rahim. Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim both come from the same root word about mercy. But what is the difference? Ar Rahman is more comprehensive, it is an infinite mercy that is from the sifat of Dhatiya, from the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He's merciful. Ar-Rahim is, is specific to a time and a situation and that's why it is from the sifat al-fi'liyya, from the action of Allah subhanahu wa mercy upon mankind. So Ar-Rahman is the extensively, immersely um, yani, merciful. Ar-Rahim, the one who specifically shows mercy, for example, for the believers on the Day of Judgment. So these are both sifat to show how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and how forgiving and loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from his that, from his essence that he is merciful. And from that mercy, he is merciful even to kuffar because he gives them food, he gives them sustenance, he gives them life, he gives them cure, he, he lets them live, he lets them uh, get all these bounties in, on earth even when they're being unthankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the fusaq and the fujjar and to the sinners and others. And from his mercy, that he has particular specific mercy specially for the believers. That is going to be specifically on the day of judgment, that mercy will be for the believers. Ar Rahman or Rahim. Alhamdulillah. What is Alhamdulillah? Alhamd is a way to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the same time, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the same time, uh, I need to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every, every praise, every uh, method of perfection, everything is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that can be considered praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is for none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The al here is al al istighraq, yani it includes all of the praise. Anything that is praiseworthy is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lillah, it is only Allah al ikhtisas, it is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot say Alhamdulillah Abi, or Alhamdulillah Muhammad, or Alhamdulillah Fulan, or Alhamdulillah. Alhamdu faqad lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamd. You can make thana, you can praise somebody, you can do madh, you can hamada, but alhamd, this has to be only for Allah because only Allah has every praise or the quality that can be. Rabbil Alameen, He is the Rabb, He is the owner, the, the Lord of Alameen. Alam is not just this world, not just this solar system, not just this galaxy. Alameen, Allah is the Lord of so many creations. Somebody said Allah has 18,000 creations, Allah has this. Where did you get that number? How did you stop it there? How many creations of Allah that we don't even know about? Junood of Allah, armies of Allah, we don't even know about. Allah is the Rabb of all of that. Allah is the Lord of everything that we know and we don't know. When you look up in the sky and you see all those stars and those galaxies and those solar systems and those planets and, and everything that you see, this is just the first sama. Zayyina sama ad-dunya bi masabih. In Surah Al-Mulk, Allah SWT tells us that we, we beautified the sky of this world with stars. So imagine all that Allah is past that first sama. The second sama, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the arsh, the kursi, and so much more 
Jannah, Jahannam that we don't even know, that we haven't even seen things that were not even mentioned to us. Allah is the Rabb of all of that. That is our Rabb. That is our Creator. It's not a cow, it's not a goat, it's not a human. You can't put it in those terms. Allah, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ that's why we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He has told about Himself because He knows about Himself what we don't even know. So whatever Allah says, we believe in it in the Qur'an. We believe it in what has been relayed upon the lisan of Al-Mustafa alayhi salatu wasalam. Ar-Rahman rahim I already explained, so I will not repeat myself. Maliki yawm din He is the owner of the Day of Judgment. This is not a deep tafsir, so I'm going to keep it. Uh, summarize Malik is also a king and you can call somebody Malik as or Malik denoting the same uh, kingdom or ownership but he is the king he is the one that will judge on the day of judgment in this world many people feel that I am the owner of this and I am the king of this and I'm the president and I'm the prime minister and I'm the uh, dictator and I'm this and I'm that and they can give themselves any title supreme leader whatever they want but in reality, there's only one king, and that is Allah. And on that day of judgment, everybody will find that out. They will find out that they have no power, they have no authority, they have no kingdom, they have no army. Allah is the king. And Allah will rule and He will judge on that day. SubhanAllah, beautiful. Ayat Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah wrote an entire book that you can find in five volumes in Madarid al Salihin, which is just the tafsir of Iyaka Na'budu, Iyaka Nasta'in. Subhanallah. Uh, a very important work, and I'm going to not mention uh, many of the things that I wish I could, but what does it mean? Iyaka. Yani, only to you, Na'budu is our worship close meaning okay? the actual sentence in Arabic should be this is a, a, a jumla fi'liya so it should be na'budu iyaka yani, we only worship you our worship is only for you ya Allah but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an emphasis we see taqdim wa ta'khir here tawkidan he put iyaka first to explain to us that only and only for Allah. I mean, let me explain to you in kind of a linguistic because you need to appreciate the wording here. Uh, when we say uh, Yusuf went to the park, and somebody goes, I thought it was, it was Musa. And I'm like, no, nah, Yusuf went to the park. Like, uh, I think it was Musa. I was like, no, no, it was Yusuf. It was, uh, when I emphasize that, I will, I will put an emphasis there to explain that I'm, this is the pers- I know what I'm saying. And this is what I'm talking about. So here it would be, oh Allah, only do we, you do we worship. But here Allah brought Iyaka first to show that nobody else can be worshipped. There's an emphasis. No saint, no qabr, no prophet, no idol deserves worship. Only Allah can be worshipped. We cannot make sujood to graves. We cannot make sujood to uh, elders. We cannot... Show respect to our parents by making sujood to them, as in some cultures they do. No, the sujood for this ummah has been made haram, as Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi told us. When the Sahaba they wanted to make sujood to the Prophet, he said, "No, Allah has not allowed it for this ummah." So we can only do ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Tell who can we make du'a to? Can we make du'a? Oh, Abdul Qadir Jilani, you're a great scholar. Give me a child. Okay, say, so, oh Nabi, you're close to Allah. Make this uh, issue easy for me. No. Ad-du'a wal ibadah. Rasulullah s.a.w. told us, du'a is a worship. So du'a is made only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, ya Ali, help me. No. Who did Ali radiyan make du'a to? Allah. Who did Abdul Qadir al-Jilani make du'a to? Allah. Who did Rasulullah s.a.w. make du'a to? Allah. Who did Jesus, Isa alayhi salatu salam, make dua to Allah? So we can only make dua to Allah. This Fatiha could teach me this. And we seek that help only from Allah. If you want to seek help, seek from Allah. The Prophet gave this advice to many of the Sahaba. If you want to seek help, ask help from Allah. 
And here again, Iyaka emphasis only Allah. The unseen help is only asked of Allah. I could ask a brother, can you hand me this? This, is, this, is, this isn't the unseen help. Can you help me uh, jumpstart my car? That's a different issue. That's a worldly, that's not a part of ibad, that's a part of the unseen. But when you ask help for the things of unseen, for dua, for divine help, you cannot say, oh Ali, help me get out of this hardship. Oh, uh, yani Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, help me and get out of debt. No, only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do we seek help. Take us towards the straight path. The, the straight path, or oh Allah guide us to the straight path. What does that mean, the straight path? The path of the Anbiya, as the Quran explains itself. The path of the Shuhada, of the Siddiqeen, of the people who tell the truth, of the Shuhada, of the martyrs, of the Salihin. And what does that tell you? This is the path of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the Sahaba, those Abu Bakr, Siddiq, the Shuhada, Umar and Uthman radiallahu anhum and Ali radiallahu anhum and from them, after them, the Salihin, the pious generation, the Salaf al-Salihin, those that showed us the straight path, this is the straight path. Sirat al an'amta alayhim, the path of those that you bestowed with your favors, with your bounties. And that is the path of those, as we mentioned, this is the path of the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba radiyanhum and the pious generation and those who followed them from the ulema of Islam in their aqidah and their manhaj and goodness. غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ And not the path of those that earned, earned your wrath. وَلَضَّالِينَ And not the path of those who went astray. The Prophet ﷺ explained this ayah in a hadith that is authentic from Imam Tirmidhi, has reported it. Where Rasulullah told us, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ Who are we seeking refuge not to be on the path? This is the Yahud. وَلَضَّالِينَ This is the Nasara, the Christians. The Jews and the Christians. The Jews, they try to trick Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they gain the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is, we don't want to follow their footsteps. And the Christians, even though they were yani, uh, sincere in their intentions, but out of ignorance and wulu and exaggeration, they started to go astray and they went astray. And we do not want to do that either. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from those things. We'll continue with a lighter tafsir, inshaAllah ta'ala. ألف لام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَى سَمْعِهِمْ وَعَلَى أَبْصَارِهِمْ غِشَاوَةٌ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ 
في قلوبهم مرض فزادهم الله مرضا ولهم عذاب أليم بما كانوا يكذبون وإذا قيل لهم لا تفسدوا في الأرض قالوا إنما نحن مصلحون ألا إنهم هم المفسدون ولكن لا يشعرون وإذا قيل لهم آمنوا كما آمن الناس قالوا قالوا ونؤمن كما آمن السفهاء ألا إنهم هم السفهاء ولكن لا يعلمون وإذا لقوا الذين آمنوا قالوا آمنا وإذا خلوا إلى شاطينهم قالوا إنا معكم إنما نحن مستهزئون الله يستهزئ بهم ويمدهم في طويانهم يعمهون أولئك الذين اشتروا الضلالة بالهدى فما ربحت تجارتهم وما كانوا مهتدين مثلهم كمثل الذي استوق قد نارا فلما أضاءت ما حوله ذهب الله بنورهم ذهب الله بنورهم وتركهم في ظلمات لا يبصرون صم بكم عمي فهم لا يرجعون أو كصيب من السماء فيه ظلمات ورعد وبرق يجعلون أصابعهم في آذانهم من الصواعق حذر الموت والله محيط بالكافرين يكاد البرق يخطف أبصارهم كلما أضاء لهم مشوا فيه وإذا أظلم عليهم قاموا ولو شاء الله لذاب بسمعهم وأبصارهم إن الله على كل شيء قدير يا أيها الناس اعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون الذي جعل لكم الأرض فراشا والسماء بناء وأنزل من السماء ماء فأخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم فلا تجعلوا لله أندادا وأنتم تعلمون وإن كنتم في ريب مما نزلنا على عبدنا فأتوا بسورة من مثله وادعوا شهداءكم من دون الله وادعوا شهداءكم من دون الله إن كنتم صادقين فإن لم تفعلوا ولن تفعلوا فاتقوا النار التي وقودها الناس والحجارة أعدت للكافرين وبشر الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات أن لهم أن لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار كلما رزقوا منها من ثمرة رزقا قالوا هذا الذي رزقنا من قبل وأتوا به متشابها ولهم فيها أزواج مطهرة وهم فيها خالدون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم So again, we begin with the, the Bismillah saying uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins Surah Al-Baqarah with three letters Alif, Lam, Mim Regarding these letters, there are aqwal about their meaning and their relationship to the Qur'an itself and 
I'm not going to get into all of those because we're keeping it brief here. But what is correct is there is a meaning, no doubt. The, the, nothing in the Qur'an is without meaning. And what is correct is the meaning of this for sure is only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's a great sign for us to understand that, that there is knowledge that is only with Allah. I mean, don't think you know everything. This is the problem with people. They learn a few hadith or a few ayat or they learn a little bit of science or they study physics or astrology or whatever other uh, science. And then suddenly they think they know everything about everything. And anytime you mention anything, they're like, oh, I know. Like, you don't know. <laughs> and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. And this is a sign for us. That even if you are a great alim and a sheikh and this and that and you memorize all these books and everything, but in the end there is some knowledge that is only going to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it should bring humbleness in us. This is the book, Hadal al-Kitab. Yani, when we talk about a kitab, we say Hadal al-Kitab. This is the way we refer to things. This is a book. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say it that way. Zalik al-Kitab. There. Why? As the ulama of tafsir in the light of the aqwal from the salaf have mentioned, because this was revealed at a time that the Qur'an was not complete in its revelation yet. All of the Qur'an had not been revealed. So, ذلك kitab there is the book is being referred to the actual uh, Qur'an in Luh al-Mahfuz. The Qur'an was revealed in three stages. As Ahid ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, sahih hadith, he said the Qur'an was first revealed because the Qur'an was never created. This is the kalam of Allah. It's always been there with Allah. As Allah has always been there, His kalam has always been there. But it was revealed where Allah revealed it to the lah, to the tablet, to be written down, recorded. That's the first. And Allah recited that to the tablet, to be recorded with everything else that Allah ordained to be recorded. A second is in one night. When the whole Qur'an was revealed from the tablet by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Baytul Izza, which is in a, a place uh, in the last sama, in the, in the, which is the first sama for us, but in the lowest sama. And this is the meaning that we find in Laylatul, the Qur'an being revealed in Laylatul Qadr, in the one night. And the third is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the means of Jibreel alayhi salatu salam to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa over 23 years of his life. This is the third stage of revelation. So when we see the Qur'an at this time, ذَلِكَ kitab, that book, because it was not all revealed, it's referring to what is in the uh, Luhu. This is the book, the Qur'an, therefore there is no doubt a guidance for those who are muttaqoon, people of taqwa, yani people of uh, the awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who, who, who protect themselves from sins. This Qur'an has been revealed as a guidance. Huda. Not just a baraka. And in some people today, they've used the Qur'an only for baraka. So when there is a wedding, they'll take a Qur'an, they'll put it on some, somebody's head. When there is a uh, yani some uh, issue in the family, then they, maybe they'll take the Qur'an, or oh, read the Qur'an, so will, will this bala, this problem will go away. But they don't use the Qur'an as guidance. But the Qur'an was revealed as a guidance. So you should use the Qur'an in your everyday life. How to eat, how to sleep, how to drink, how to fast, how, all of that should go back to the Qur'an. And what was revealed with the Qur'an? The Sunnah of the Prophet This is a guidance for us. For the muttaqoon, for the people of taqwa, the people of fisq, the people of fajr, the people of sins and the people that have disease in their heart, the Qur'an, they will read it, they will recite it, but it will not benefit them. Their, their misguidance will increase. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises some nations with this Qur'an and degrades others with it. The Qur'an can be either luck or alayk. It can be for you or it can be upon you, a, 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 a warning against you. <clears throat> and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, gives us sifat, gives us the qualities of those muttaqeen, those people of taqwa. What is their qualities? Those who believe in the unseen. The unseen, 
yani, what does that include? We haven't seen Allah. We believe in Allah. We haven't seen the Malaika. We believe in the Malaika. We haven't seen much of what has been told to us in the Quran about the, uh, the, the, the prophets of the past and the books that were revealed to him and what happened to him. But if it's in this Quran, we believe in it. We haven't seen Jannah, we haven't seen Jahannam, but we believe in it. This is the sifa of a, of a mu'min that we believe in the unseen. Some people are like, show me this, show me Allah, show me that. If you see it, where's the test? And you can respond like some of the atheists and stuff that can, you can say, okay, show me intelligence. Well, you make decisions. Well, that's not intelligence. That's a sign of intelligence. Hand me intelligence in my hand. Huh? Can you do it? Show me black matter. Show me other things that hold the universe together, things that we cannot see, things that we cannot touch, things that we cannot feel. But because of the atharat, because of the signs of their existence, we believe in them scientifically. So we as Muslims say, because of the miracles of the, of the Qur'an, because of the miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us, because of the life that Allah has given us, because of the intelligence in the design of the humans in the universe, we believe in Allah. Even if we haven't seen Allah, we have evidence to believe in Allah. Those who believe in the unseen, and the sifa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always brings about the mu'min and the believer, a salah. And they establish the salah. Always the Qur'an, you see salah. And that's why anything you leave from the ibadat will make you a sinner as long as you don't deny it. As long as you say there's no hajj, there's no siyam, there's no zakat, there's no hudud, you become kafir. But if somebody yani, leaves one of the ibadat, they're still Muslim. They could be a big sinner, a fasiq, but they're still Muslim except as-salah. وَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى مَنْ تَرْكُ الصَّلَاةِ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَهُمْ يعني المشركين الصلاة. So many ahadith, sahih. And from the Quran we find this, that the believer has to establish a salah. And they spend of what has been given to them, يعني they give zakat and sadaqah and these kinds of things, on themselves and their parents and their children and their wives and give charity and, and the path of Allah. When Allah gives you, you didn't earn it. Don't think, oh, I made this money. If Allah didn't ordain it, you wouldn't have that job. If Allah didn't ordain it, your business wouldn't do as good as it's been doing. You, if Allah didn't ordain it, you wouldn't have that parent that gave you that money. You wouldn't have that spouse. You wouldn't have that. So Allah, everything in the end is from Allah. If Allah takes away the crops tomorrow, like today you have, we have money, sometimes we can't go shop. The coronavirus got us locked down. But imagine, this is just one little thing. Imagine if tomorrow Allah stopped the rain. All the money in the world would do you no good. If you got no food, you got no water. So everything is from Allah. So when we give, we give. We, we understand that in reality it's from Allah. So we should spend it for the sake of Allah. And those who believe in the Quran and the Sunnah, those who, who believe, يعني, they, they are الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أَنزَلَ إِلَيْكَ يعني, They believe in what has been revealed to you. To who? To the Prophet ﷺ. What has been revealed the Quran? and the guidance with it which Rasulullah sallallahu explained to us in his sunnah. And in that which was sent down before you, we as Muslims believe in what was sent to the other anbiya. We believe in the Torah as it was revealed to the Prophet Musa والسلام, and in Injil as it was revealed to the Prophet Isa والسلام, and in Zabur as it was revealed to the Prophet Da'ud in general. I am just giving general ideas. Uh, the Torah and the Zubur and the way that was revealed and how it was revealed and exactly I'm not going to get into all of that because that is going to be a deep tafsir but in those books that were revealed earlier and in those prophets that were before uh, the Prophet ﷺ, we believe in them we don't deny Isa alayhi salam, Jesus we don't deny Musa alayhi salam, Moses or Dawud alayhi salam, David unlike the Christians who deny Muhammad وسلم, and the Jews who deny Isa alayhi salam, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. Both of them are naqis there. For us, we are complete. We believe in all of those anbiya. And they believe with certainty. They have yaqeen. They have no doubt in the hereafter. And which is a part of that is the resurrection on the day of judgment. And the judgment of good and bad deeds. And Jannah and Jahannam and everything that's in the akhirah. And a, and a mu'min no doubt uh, yani has full yaqeen in the akhirah. Yuqinuna. Yani they, they have a firm belief. 
As many of the Sahaba, they said, if Jannah and Jahannam were shown to us, it would not increase or decrease our belief. They are on true guidance from their Rabb, from their Lord, and they are successful. Who are they? The believers who have this sifat are upon huda min rabbihim. From their, from their Lord has said that guidance. And they are the one muflihun. They are the ones who are successful. Verily those who disbelieve, it is the same to them whether you or Muhammad sallallahu warn them or do not warn them, they will not believe. Now, not to take this the wrong way. Yani, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu has also been ordained in the Quran to call the people towards Islam. But what, what Allah SWT is telling the Prophet that don't kill yourself when somebody is not becoming a Muslim. The Prophet he used to take a great, he knew that Jannah is true, he knew Jahannam, he had a great yaqeen. So when he saw the kuffar from his own family, from his own tribe and his people not believing in it and knowing the harsh punishment that's ahead of them, he would, he, would, he would be killing himself, not literally, but in the sense of harming his health and, and self, worried about them. And Allah SWT tells them, look, your job is to convey. This is the Quran, ma alayna illa bala. al yani, what is upon us is to convey a clear message. We need to do da'wah, we need to be concerned, we need to go out, and we need to explain to the kuffar what Islam is. We need to reach out and build those bridges to bring them towards the truth, the haqq. But at the same time, if somebody doesn't become Muslim, no, don't worry about it. Allah is there. If, if, they are, if they have goodness in their heart, if they have any iota of wanting to know the truth, Allah will open the way for them. And if they don't, what can we do? Allah has set a seal on their hearts and on their hearing and on their eyes and there is a covering and there will be a great torment for them. I mean, those people who see the miracles of Allah in front of them. Zamzam, as Musa brought up the other day, Zamzam, what a miracle. I mean, a, a small spring in, in a little city. We have many springs. When too many people drink from it, it dries up. Weather change, they dry up. Zamzam, since the time of Ismail alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam, from that time people have been drinking from this well. Not just drinking from it. I mean, till today, everybody in Mecca that goes, or people that go to Mecca on Hajj and Umrah, they drink from this and drink from it and drink from it and they bottle it up. And you, and you see everybody who goes for Hajj and Umrah, they take bottles and bottles, sometimes 10 and 20 per person. I've seen one person take 10 bottles of Zamzam bottle, they take it. And on top of that, it's, it's bottled and, and sent out in different as, uh, areas, even from Mecca, it's taken to Medina. In Masjid you will see, and people around the world are drinking and drinking and drinking, and Allah makes it that it continues. And when the sun rises, when this moon, moon is there at night, when, when all these signs of Allah in front of us, and then we still close our eyes to the fact that there is a creator, then, then those people, then Allah has put a seal on their heart from, from, the, from the bad qualities that they have. And on their hearing, they hear the Qur'an, they hear the truth, but they don't hear it. And on their eyes from seeing. And for them, there'll be an adab, an adim, yani a great punishment. Don't worry about them. And of mankind, there are some, yani, and the meaning here, as Ibn Kathir and others have mentioned, is, is those munafiqun, hypocrites, who say we believe in Allah and the last day, while in fact they believe not. And there are those who will be standing with the banner of Islam, but in their heart, they have no belief. They want to harm the Muslim Ummah. They want to mock at the Qur'an. Those who say we believe in the Qur'an but then mock at it. And they think to deceive Allah and those who are true believers, those that are, that are believers, they think they're going to deceive Alladina Amanu, those who are believers, while they only deceive themselves and even they don't even realize it, they perceive it not. And in their hearts is a disease. A disease of what? Of shak, of doubt of nifaq, of hypocrisy. And Allah has increased their disease. Because when they have that hypocrisy and, and they deny and they make fun of and they don't have that, then Allah lets them and He increases it for them. Because for them also is a painful torment because of the lies that they tell. And when it's said to them, make not mischief on earth, don't cause problems on earth, they say, we are, the, we are the peacemakers. 
We are the one trying to spread peace when, with their bombs and tanks and killings. And then you tell them, what are you doing? Oh, we're trying, to, we're trying to bring peace to them. We're liberating the oil from that country. You find these kinds of strange ideas. So Allah tells us here that when it is said to them, make not mischief on earth, what do they say? We are only peacemakers. Verily, they are the ones who make mischief, but they perceive it not. And when it is said to them, to those munafiqun, those hypocrites, that believe as the people, yani as the followers of the Prophet وسلم, the Ansar, Muhajirun, the Sahaba and the Mu'minun have believed, they say, shall we believe as the fools have believed? Verily, they are the ones who are fools, but they know not. Every time you have a Mu'min, the Kafir thinks they know better. Oh, those guys, they're back. Oh, we're, we believe in science. What, what do you know of science? And what, what can science tell you about where you came from? What can science tell you where will you go after death? What can science tell you what is the purpose of your life? Nothing. Science is just a study of the creation of Allah. And when they meet those who believe, they say, we believe. The munafiq, when they see, so they come to the masjid, Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, Shaykh, Alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar. And when they say, they believe. But when they are alone with their shayateen, and their shayateen from ints as well, from their shayateen of people. I just went there, I was making fun of the Amma's spy. I was just trying to see what, what's going on in that masjid. I was, I was, I was trying to, uh, I'm, I'm with you. They said, truly, we are with you. Really, we were but mocking. Allah mocks at them and gives them increase in their wrongdoing to wander blindly. These are, th are they who have purchased error for guidance. And they, their, their trade, their commerce was profitless. What did they buy? They sold guidance for misguidance. And that means it was a horrible trade. And they were not guided. Their likeness is the likeness of the one who is kindled a fire. And when it is lit all around him, Allah took their light and left them in darkness so they could not see. They are deaf, dumb, and blind, so they return not to the right path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them, look, you've been given sight, but you don't see the truth. You've been given hearing, but you don't hear what's true. You've been given a mind, but you don't think. You're dumb, you're blind, you're deaf in the matters of the Akhirah. So he's telling them, he's giving them an example of dunya to warn them so they come back to the right path. Or like a rainstorm from a sky, wherein is darkness, thunder, and lightning. And these examples are given to us of things that we see to guide us. They, trust their fi they, they thrust their fingers in their ears to keep out the stunning thunderclap or fear of death. But Allah have ever compenses the believers. The lightning almost snatches away their sight whenever it flashes for them. They walk therein, and when darkness covers them, they stand still. And if Allah willed, He could have taken away their hearing and their sight. Certainly Allah has power over all things. SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if we were doing tafsir in depth in Arabic, we would talk about tashbih and balagha here, but we're not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them such beautiful imagery to tell them, look, Imagine yourself in that type of a thunderstorm, you can't see, you can't, you hear that lightning and, and it makes your heart shake and people get scared and afraid. Look, the Akhirah is something more important. So why are you ignoring that? And if Allah wants, He'll take all these senses away from you, so use your senses to go back to the right path. O mankind, worship your Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya nas. Yani, this is not just for the believers, all mankind should worship Allah. That is the haqq of Allah. That is the right of Allah. Worship your Lord Allah who created you and those who, you, who, who were before you that you may become muttaqun. Yani, who created us and those that came before us. A, I mean, any atheist you should ask him, where did you come from? An accident? Seriously? That's what you're going to go with? Hey, you, you, think, you think some monkey just, or an ape or something just developed into a human? I mean, where did that ape come from? Where did the monkey come from? We got no answers. Allah's given you the answers. He's giving you this example to know who has made the earth a resting place for you and the sky a canopy to protect you and sent down water, rain from the sky and brought forth fruits as a provision for you. SubhanAllah. I mean, amazing. How can somebody not believe in Allah after these ayat? 
Who put the sky, who put the ozone layer, who made all these layers and ways to protect us from the harmful rays of the sun and to let us benefit from the beneficial rays of the sun? Who put that sky above us? Who gives us fruit? Who gives us vegetables? Who gives us meat? Who gives us all these bounties that we eat and we survive off of? It is Allah. Then do not set up rivals unto Allah. Some people worship monkeys. You think a monkey gave you life? Some people worship cows. You think a cow gave you life? You think the cow created the world? Some people worship a person. You think that person did this? No. It is the creator of all of those creations. Then do not set rivals unto Allah while you know that He... What do you know? And what is Allah? That you know that only Allah is worthy of worship. People know this. But they deny it. They close their eyes. And if you, it refers to the Arab pagans and the Yahud and the Christians and everybody else, are in doubt concerning that which was sent down, the Qur'an, to our slave, to, yani to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi then produce a surah, subhanAllah, beautiful, challenge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, produce a surah, or the like thereof, and call your witnesses, besides Allah if you are truthful. Two challenges here. One, if you don't believe in the Qur'an, bring something like it. Bring a surah. Till today, nobody's been able to do it. There was a, a movement by some of the, what's called the 700 Club. And they got these Arab professors together to write another Quran. And after millions of dollars being spent in it, they gave up. Why? They said, if we try to make it sound nice like the Quran, then we can't put the ahkam in it, the rulings in it. If we try to put the rulings in it, we live. They, they made a writing. What they did, they took a hadith and things, they mixed them up and they said, here. And they failed. Why? Because this is a challenge from Allah. The Qur'an has scientific facts and it has medical, linguistic miracles. It has historic evidences. It has news of the hereafter. It has every beautiful يعني, thing you can think of from, from يعني, things that were prophecies that came through. All of that in such a beautiful, easy to memorize miracle of the Qur'an in front of us. Nobody can copy it. And the challenge has been put out more than 1400 years. The Quran has been revealed. Nobody's been able to step up to the challenge. And if they believe in others than, than Allah, tell them, bring, bring those people. Bring, those, bring that cow to help you in, in your hardship. See, see if uh, uh, that rock that you worship as a statue can take you out of a hardship. That rock, if I push it, it, brought, it breaks, it, it shatters, it can't even protect itself. Allah is above the samawat, above all of that. But if you do not, and you can never do it, Allah is telling him, if you don't, and know that you'll never be able to do it, then fear the nar, the fire, the hellfire. Fear that nar, that fire, whose fuel is men and stones. SubhanAllah. I need the fuel of the hellfire is hijar, I need the anas, people, and the, and the stones, and again, if we're going to go to a deeper tafsir, there's a lot, but I'm going to just uh, keep it brief here. And it's been prepared for the disbelievers. The nar, the jahannam, is the destination for the kuffar. This is what it's been made for. And give glad tidings to those who believe and do righteous good deeds, that for them, there will be al-jannah, the gardens under which rivers will flow. Jannah is a place... That's meant as a reward for the believers. It is the mercy of Allah. It is the place so beautiful, so wonderful, you could not imagine it. These are only examples given to you of what you can imagine. Every time they will be provided with fruit therefrom, they will say, this is what we were, we were provided with before. But, uh, <clears throat> and they will be given things in resemblance. Yani from those that they taste, every time they taste, as the hadith mentions, the taste will be different. They will never get bored of it. They will never be sick of it. There will be nothing that they don't enjoy in Jannah. And they shall then therein yani, have purified spouses and they will abide in there forever. Verily Allah, can you stop here? Right? 25? We will stop here for today, inshallah.